Hey guys, this is going to be a review of Star Trek Discovery Season 3, Episode 2, Far From Home. We're back with the Discovery in this episode and we get to see the rest of the crew, which I was really happy about because after the first episode, like I mentioned when I reviewed that one, I was worried that we would have, well not worried so much because I enjoy Michael and if we had gotten Michael on her own for most of the season I think that the story still could have been really good but like obviously I would have missed the rest of the cast so I was happy to see that right away we got to see them again in this episode. As soon as the Discovery goes through the rift they end up crashing into a planet and they need help, they need to do repairs but they don't know anything about the planet that they've landed on in the time period that they're in. So they don't know what's going on. We get a villain for this episode that's very different from any of the villains in season one and two. It's interesting because in a way he's less powerful than people that Discovery has come up against in the past because obviously We've had conflict with the Klingons and they were dealing with like the people, like the Klingons who are most powerful. Whereas now you have this courier who terrorizes this one planet and has like lackeys or whatever. But in the grand scheme of things, he's not that powerful. Yet, because Discovery doesn't know what's going on it's still very scary and right away it does a really good job of showing how little influence Starfleet has in the future because obviously as part of Starfleet Discovery before was fighting really powerful people and they had like all of Starfleet backing them up whereas now they realize that Starfleet is so powerless in the future that they have this relatively unpowerful guy, yet he's still a threat to them. So I really liked how that illustrated that. At the end of season two, I mentioned that I wasn't expecting Giorgio to go to the future. I really expected her to stay in the past. But this episode did a really good job of showing why having her along is good, because everyone else is out of their element. Starfleet isn't what it was or what they're used to and they don't know how to deal with people when they don't have that power backing them up. Whereas Giorgio is, has always been okay not following Starfleet protocol and is able to deal with the situation in a way that they aren't. So this episode did a really great job showing why she's there. For a while I was really hoping that Cal would join the crew. He talks about how he has hoped to see Starfleet and he seemed so optimistic and hopeful and he finally got to meet them and then he immediately dies. That is really sad. I It would have been great to just have him on the show more in the future even if he wasn't like even if he didn't join the Discovery crew, having him as a character that came back at some point later would have been nice. But maybe we'll see some of the other characters on that planet, I don't know. Back on the Discovery, Stamets and Reno are trying to fix the ship, even though Stamets, well, Stamets and Reno were both injured, but Stamets is supposed to be resting and he helps instead. And then Reno gets Colber to come to like help motivate Stamets. The three of them together is amazing. Their dynamics and the way that they play off of each other is just great. In fact, while I was watching this episode, I ended up opening the notes app on my phone because there are so many great quotes in this episode that I wanted to write down. One of them was Giorgio and about cleaning the gooey bits of control. What's his name? I have already Leland off of the spore drive or whatever but a lot of them that I wrote down were Reno, Stamets, and Colbert interacting. I think my favorite line was when they were successful and Reno calls Stamets what was Bobcat and Colbert's like Bobcat and Reno's like I don't know I'm on drugs. 
great moment. I just, there's so much comedy in this episode despite how serious everything is and how everyone on the Discovery is so uncertain about everything. It was just great. I loved the tone of the whole episode and how it balanced those things very well. At the end of the episode, Discovery meets up with Michael and again, I was really excited because even after we saw Discovery again, I was still worried that they would spend a significant portion of the season separated. Like Michael would be doing her thing looking for Discovery and Discovery would be looking for Michael. But instead, they find each other at the end of the episode. So that happened much faster than I was expecting it to. But we also find out that Michael has been in the future for a year. I will admit that I have watched past this episode because I filmed this review once and then I accidentally deleted it so we're filming it again. But I was really curious at the time about whether we would see flashbacks to what happened to Michael during that year or if she would just talk about what happened over that year or not. I am loving this season so far and like I mentioned I have watched episode 3 as well so I'm really excited to talk about that too. So I will see you guys later. Bye.